Hello and welcome to Edusathi. Let's continue the topic of algebra and we'll do quadratic, cubic and higher degree equations in this lecture. I hope you have gone through the previous two lectures of algebra which included algebraic expressions, polynomials, linear and simultaneous equations. In case you have not gone through uh, the previous lectures, I would request you to first move back and look at the previous lectures and then continue with this topic of quadratic equations. Let's start with what is quadratic equation. Quadratic equation is an equation of degree 2. We've already studied this, what is, what is the concept of degree and power in the first lecture. So an equation of degree 2, that means the highest power of any variable has to be 2. That is termed as a quadratic equation. And in a general format, it is written as y is equal to ax square plus bx plus c. Now if you look here, ax square, x square, that means this is the Equa this is the equation of degree 2. This is the coefficient of the uh, variable with the highest power. 2 means I can have the lower powers as well. Plus b x. b is the coefficient of the variable with a single power. And c is a constant term that I have. Now if I graphically look at what a quadratic equation would be when I draw it on an x y plane it will turn out to be a parabola. Instead of a line, this turns out to be a parabola. A linear equation turns out to be a line on an xy axis, whereas the graph of a quadratic equation is a parabolic graph. Now this parabola could be an upward opening parabola or a downward opening parabola depending upon the value of a. What is a? A is the coefficient of the term with the highest power of x. So if A is positive, it will be an upward opening parabola that I will have. And if the value of A in an original equation is negative, the graph that I will have will be a downward opening parabola. So it will be a parabolic graph that I will have for a quadratic equation. It can be upward opening or downward opening depending upon the coefficient of the term with the highest power of x. Now this term have to be considered in an original format. I cannot rearrange the terms or rearrange the plus and the minus sign and then draw the graph because that will give me not the exact graph for the equation. So let's now understand the concept of root of a quadratic equation. We've already started this concept while we were doing uh, polynomials but we'll revise it again. Root, root refers to the input when the output is fixed as 0. So that value of input for which the output is 0 is known as the root of the equation. So that value of x for which your value of fx is 0 will be termed as the root of the equation. If I look here, if I fixed this thing equal to 0, the value of x will be termed as the root. Now. Let's look at the graph. Now if you look at the graph of a greater than 0, that means a positive which will be an up upward opening parabola. The parabola cuts the x-axis at two different points. These points alpha and beta will be termed as roots of the equation. Now these values that you have for input for which the output is 0. Why is the output 0? Because the value on y axis. Now y axis could be here. Y axis could be here. Y axis could be here. So I have not drawn the y axis. Y axis will depend upon what is, what, what is the equation which is given to us. So if I look at the two input values of alpha and beta where the output turns out to be 0, these two values will be known as roots of the quadratic equation. Now if you look at the degree of this equation, 
the degree of the quadratic equation is 2. So, that means it can have maximum of 2 roots. The roots could be real, equal, unequal, uh, imaginary that will depend upon various situation but it will have maximum of 2 roots. Similarly, when you have a case where your coefficient of the highest uh, term is negative that means a is less than 0 the graph will be a downward opening parabola it still cuts the x axis at two points those values of input will be known as roots of the equation now if i look here this graph for parabola is symmetric around its own axis so this is if i just look at this whatever is the graph on the left hand side the same will be on the right hand side this is the axis of symmetry this is not the y axis the position of y axis will depend upon the equation which is given to you in the question but every parabola is symmetric around its own axis of symmetry so from this point the distance of alpha and beta would turn out to be same so this point will actually be the midpoint of alpha and beta so the value of input at this point would be alpha and beta now output is not zero at this point the output is this value that i have the output value is coming out to be positive value this point is known as the point of maxima this is the point where the maximum value of the graph is achieved so x coordinate which is alpha plus beta by 2 is known as point of maxima and the y coordinate will be known as the maximum value if you look here the graph goes on increasing from this to this point which is the maximum then it goes on decreasing so this is the maximum value that the graph can ever attain so x coordinate is the point of maxima and y coordinate is your maximum value that is attained in an open graph similarly if you come to this graph this this point will again be the midpoint of alpha and beta so it will be alpha and beta by 2 the value of y if i put this input comes out to be negative because it is below x-axis this point will be known as the point of minima that means the x coordinate which is alpha plus beta by 2 will be known as the point of minima and the y coordinate which will turn out to be negative will be known as the minimum value which the function can ever attain and if you look at the value of the function it goes on decreasing goes on decreasing goes on decreasing these to a minimum value and then keeps on increasing so the value of this quadratic equation or the value of this graph does not fall below this point so this is known as the minima and this is known as the maxima so if a is positive i will have a condition where i can find out the minima if a is negative i'll have a condition where i can find out the maxima so if you want to revise the thing about uh, roots again i would say the value of input for which the output variable turns out to be zero is known as the root and graphically it is the point where the graph cuts or touches the x axis that is all you need to know about roots of an equation but how to find out the roots that's an important question. I've told you what are the roots. Roots are alpha and beta. So that value of input where the output comes out to be zero. But how to find that? Let's move forward and understand how to find out the roots of a quadratic equation. I hope till now you have memorized the general form of an equation. It is ax squared plus bx plus c. So there are various methods that we can use to find out the roots of the equation. Let's look at the first method and this is a very very simple and the most commonly used method as well. Sum and product of the roots. So if you look at the equation and if you look at the roots. So I'll assume alpha and beta are the roots of the equation. Sum of the roots is given by minus b by a. What is b? b is the coefficient of the term containing single power of x a is the coefficient of the term containing 
the power 2 so it will be minus b by a that is the sum of the roots and product of the roots what is the roots alpha and beta is given by c by a so you find out the sum of the roots from the equation you look at the product of the roots from the equation from these two things that are there you can find out the value of alpha and beta very very easily for example let's look at the equation x squared minus 5x plus 6 now this is a quadratic function which is given to me now if I have to find out the roots I'll put x square minus 5x plus 6 equal to 0 let me call the sum of roots as minus b by a the value of a is 1 the product of roots would be c by a which is what 6 now I look at the product 6 can be written as 1 into 6 can be written as 2 into 3 so if you look here 1 plus 6 is 7 whereas 2 plus 3 is 5 so that means the roots would be 2 and 3 generally we take beta greater than alpha generally that is it because even if you have a quadratic equation like this this will be treated as alpha this will be treated as beta and if the sum and the product of roots is given to you you can make the equation so if the sum and the product is given to you you can form the equation by following this rule x squared minus this is very very important it is not plus it is minus sum of the roots into x plus the product of the roots equal to 0 so if for example if the sum of the roots in an, another equation is given to you as minus 7 and the product of the roots is also given to you uh, let me take the roots as minus 4 and minus 3 so the product of the roots would be 12 the equation that I will get would be x square minus the sum of the roots so it will be plus 7x plus the product of the roots equal to 0 and a quadratic function would be written as x square plus 7x plus 12 this is the way to write down the quadratic equation and function from the sum and the product of roots so we have another example which is x square plus 10x minus 1 is equal to 0 sorry minus 11 equals to 0 so sum would be minus b by a the value of b is 10 and the value of a is 1 so sum would be minus 10 the product would be what my c by a c is minus 11 so what I have to do is I will have to look at the product and form the sum from this so if I look at what 11 minus 11 could be formed by minus 1 into 11 or minus 11 into 1 so if I look at the product uh, at the sum now what will be the sum in this case minus 10 so I get the value of alpha and beta as so the value of alpha and beta is minus 11 and 1 so one of the roots of this equation would be minus 11 the other root would be 1 these are the roots of the equation that I have let's move forward and let's look at the second method for finding out the roots of the quadratic equation and that is splitting the middle term by factorization method this method is very similar to the sum and the product method the uh, product of roots method that we have just learned so look at it the equation that you have is ax square plus bx plus c now here if you have the two roots as alpha and beta so alpha and beta are the roots of the equation that means x minus alpha and x minus beta will be the factors of the equation a factor is a number which gives a remainder of 0 and a root is the thing where the remainder comes out to be 0 so this root would be written in a factor form and it will be written as so if you have a this equation this can also be written as the product of its two factors so ax square plus bx plus c would be written as the product of its two factors alpha and beta or the product of its two roots alpha and beta so I will put this equal to 0 I will try to split the middle term so that I get two factors so the middle term that I have here in this example is 10x and this is 11 now I have to split 10x in such a way 
so that the product of the two numbers that you get would come out to be 11. So, if you look at x square minus, I will write plus 11 x minus x minus 11 equals to 0. So, what I have done, I have splitted the middle term such that the product of the two coefficients would come out to be equal to this value. So, I will take x common, it will be x plus 11 and I will take minus 1 common, it will be x plus 11 equals to 0. From these two, I can take x plus 11 common and I will have x minus 1 equals to 0. So, these will be the two factors in which the equation can be written. If these are the two factors, that means the roots would be minus 11 and 1. So, if x minus a is a factor, x equal to a becomes the root of the equation. This is the other method that we have to find out the roots of the equation. Let us look at the third method. The third method is completing the squares. So, I complete the square and I get to my value. Now, what I have is I have an equation which is ax square plus bx plus c. I will divide this equation first with a. I will look at I will look at the coefficient of the term containing single power of x. I will then divide it with 2, square it. So, what you do is first you divide with 2, that means you half it, then you square it, then you add it and subtract it. So, when you add and subtract the same term, it basically makes no change. When you add and subtract, you will be able to make a complete square. We will understand it with the help of an example only. So, the example is again the same that we have been taking x square plus 10 x minus 11. What I will do is, I will look at the coefficient of this. What is it? 10. I will half it or divide it with 2. I will get 5. Square it. 25. Add and subtract. So, it will be x square plus 10 x plus 25 minus 25 minus 11 equals to 0 because I am finding the root. So, if I look combine at this, what is this? x plus 5 whole square is what I have minus 36 equals to 0. So, what is it? x plus 5 whole square is equal to 36. Taking square root of both the side, x plus 5 is equal to plus minus 6. So, once I will put x plus 5 is equal to plus 6, once I will put x plus 5 is equal to minus 6, I will get the answer x is equal to minus 11 and x is equal to 1. So, this is the way I can find out the roots by following the method of completion of squares. The only thing that I have to look at, first the coefficient of x square should be 1. Then look at the coefficient of x, half it, square it and then subtract. These are the two, three steps that you have. Half it, square it, add and subtract and then combine the term that will give you a complete square. Let us look at the last method for finding out the roots of the equation. This is the most commonly used method that we have. So, let us move ahead and look at how do we calculate the discriminant. The discriminant referred to as d is given as b square minus 4ac. Here b is the coefficient of the term with single power of x, a is the coefficient of the term with square power and c is the constant term. Now, this d discriminant is a very very important thing that we have to determine the nature of the roots. First, we will find out the discriminant, then we will look at the roots. So, this discriminant as already told to you, help us in determining the nature of the roots. Nature, I mean to say whether my roots are real or imaginary. Now, even in the case the roots are real, are they rational or irrational? Are they rational or irrational? Or are the, are the roots distinct or same? So, are the roots distinct or they are the same roots which are repeated? So, this is very, very important in determining the nature of the root. Let us understand how we actually determine the nature of the roots using D. 
if the value of discriminant or b square minus 4ac comes out to be negative if the value of discriminant is negative that means the roots are imaginary or unreal the roots would be imaginary if the value of d which is b square minus 4ac comes out to be equal to 0 or i can say when b square is equal to 4a c the roots that i have which are alpha and beta for the equation are real and equal that means alpha would be equal to beta the roots would be same the roots would be equal but yes the roots would be real only in the case d is negative the roots would be imaginary the third case is if d is positive that means if d b square minus 4 is c is positive the three conditions are either d could be negative or d could be zero or d could be positive so the third case when discriminant is positive then you have real and unequal roots so that means alpha will not be equal to beta alpha generally we take it as the lesser value than beta so the roots in this case would be real but unequal now if in this scenario d turns out to be a perfect square perfect square is a number whose exact square root is possible then the roots would turn out to be rational and if d is not a perfect square that means complete square root of d is not possible the roots would be irrational i hope you remember what is rational and irrational real if you have can be divided into rational and irrational you will have real roots if d is greater than or equal to 0 i'm writing equal to because you have real rational when d is greater than 0 and a perfect square even when you look here when d is equal to 0 and is a perfect equal to 0 is a perfect square it will be rational when d is greater than 0 and not a perfect square greater than 0 is very very important because then only the roots would be real if it is not greater than 0 if d is less than 0 the roots would be imaginary so real and imaginary are the two classification that you'll have for roots in real further they can be divided into rational or irrational depending upon the value of d if it is a perfect square or if it is not a perfect square if d is exactly equal to 0 alpha will be equal to beta if d is greater than 0 alpha will not be equal to beta let's look at how to find out the roots so if the value of d is coming out to be negative i already told you we have imaginary or unreal roots if i look at it graphically the graph would not touch or cut the real axis why because the roots are imaginary the graph would not cut the graph would not touch the real axis because the roots are imaginary similarly if a is negative the graph would not cut or touch the real x axis it will not touch it because the roots are imaginary if d is equal to zero i have real and equal roots that means alpha is equal to beta that means there will not be two points where the graph is is intersecting but the graph will be touching the x axis now this is the point where the graph touches the x axis this will be termed as root of the equation this will be one root where alpha and beta are equal similarly this will be the root of the equation where the graph touches i told you when we discussed uh, earlier we'll discuss the concept of touches a little later so this is the concept the graph touches the x-axis at this point this point will be the root and this point will also be the minima point minima point this point will be the root and it will also be the maxima 
point. If b square minus 4ac is greater than 0, I will have real and unequal. Unequal means alpha and beta are not equal. The graph will cut at 2 points. Here it is touching at a single point. So the graph would look something like this. This will be the two roots alpha and beta. This will be the two roots alpha and beta in both the scenarios where A is positive and when A is negative. The graph is cutting the x-axis at two point. The graph is touching the x-axis at a single point. The graph is neither touching nor cutting the x-axis because the roots that you get are imaginary. So when D is negative, when D is equal to zero and when D is positive, these are the three scenarios that we have. We understood the nature of the roots, but what about the value of the roots? So we have certain set of formulas for finding out the value of the roots. Root 1 alpha would be given as minus b plus square root of d. This the value here is discriminant over 2a. So it is minus b plus under root of sorry minus b it will be minus it will not be plus it will be minus minus b minus b square minus 4ac over 2a and the value of beta would be minus b plus b square minus 4ac again if you look here this is the value of discriminant over 2a so in general we write it as minus b plus minus under root of discriminant over 2 this is the value of the two roots alpha and beta for the quadratic equation. Again following this sum of the roots is given by minus b by a and the product of the roots is given by c by a. That thing would be valid for all the cases. The roots can be found out by using these two formulas. So let's look at the question for quadratic. Find the roots of the equation. These are the this is the equation that is given to you. I have to find the roots. Now, let me first use the method which is the sum and the product method. Let me call the roots as alpha and beta. Sum of the roots is minus b by a. Product of the roots is c by a. So, if I look at the product, it will be 1 into 6 or 2 into 3. So, if I move back, which satisfies the sum, alpha plus beta would be 7, alpha plus beta would be so that means alpha is 2 and beta is 3 that I have. That is the first method that I have to find out the roots of a quadratic equation. Now another method that I can find is splitting the middle term x square. Now 5 has to be splitted up in such a way so that the product of the two things comes out to be 6. So it will be what? 3x and 2x plus 6 equals to 0. I will take x common x minus 3 I'll take minus 2 common x minus 3 is equal to 0 again I take x minus 3 common I'll have x minus 2 equal to 0 so x minus 3 and x minus 2 are the two factors so if x minus 3 is equal to 0 x is equal to 3 if x minus 2 is equal to 0 x is equal to 2 so the two roots that you have are 2 and 3 the third is I'll, f I'll find out the discriminant so b uh, i'll find out the value of d which is what b square minus 4a c so it is 25 minus 4 into 6 so it will be 25 minus 24 which is 1 so the value of d is positive so that means i will have real and unequal roots now also d is a perfect square because what is the square root of 1? It is 1. So the roots would be rational. So I'll have real, rational and unequal roots. How to find out the roots? Alpha and beta would be given as minus b plus minus under root of d over 2a. So if I just put in the values, it will be 5 plus minus root 1 by 2. So it will be 5 plus 1 by 2 and 5 minus 1 by 2. So the roots that come out to be are 2 and 3. So alpha is 2 and beta is 3. If I draw graphically, x square the coefficient is what? 1 which is positive. That means the graph will be like this. Now d is positive. 
that means it will be cutting the x-axis at two point this will be the point two and this will be the point three this is my x-axis y-axis would be somewhere here this is how the graph would look like for x square minus 5x plus 6 this because a is positive let's move ahead and let's look at question number 2 if a particular equation has roots as 2 and minus 3 find the quadratic equation I know the value of alpha and I know the value of beta can I find out the sum of roots it will be minus 1 can I find out the product of roots it will be minus 6 so how do I write the equation x square minus sum of roots into x plus product of roots equals to your fx so it is x square minus minus 1 x minus 6 so it will be x square plus x minus 6 x square plus x minus 6 so first equation is the equation that I have the answer for the roots 2 and minus 3 let's look at question number 3 question 3 is, is one of the roots of the equation this is minus 3 so that means the the function which is given to you is a quadratic function which is something like this now I know if I keep my input as minus 3 my output will be 0 so if I put the input as minus 3 my output has to be 0 so this will be 9 into 2 18 plus 3p minus 3 is equal to 0 if I just solve it out this will be uh, 3p is equal to minus 15 the value of p comes out to be minus 5 for this equation which is d part as my answer I hope you've understood the question root is given to you so put the root in the equation and the output would be equal to 0 in that case if I draw the graph for this it will be a graph like this because 2 is what you have as the coefficient of x square now I cannot say whether it will cut touch or not because I don't know the value of uh, I don't know the value of d but if I look here one of the root I already know is minus 3 and what is minus 3 minus 3 is real and what is it and it is rational so I know d has to be greater than 0 it could be equal to also if both the roots turn out to be same so if I look at d d is b square b square means it is 5 square or minus 5 square 25 minus 4 a and c so whatever it the, is the answer d is positive that means I have two roots for the equation one of those is minus 3 I found out the value of phi. I can also find out the value of other root but that is not asked to me in the question let's look at question number four for quadratic if alpha and beta are the roots of the equation x square plus x minus 7 equals to 0 find the value of alpha square plus beta square now if I just look at the equation that I have I know that the sum of roots would be minus b by a and the product of roots would be c by a so what I have to do is I will modify this equation as alpha plus beta whole square what is the value of alpha plus beta whole square it will be alpha square plus beta square plus 2 alpha beta so the value of alpha plus beta whole square would be written as alpha plus beta whole square minus 2 alpha beta I know the value of alpha plus beta whole square 1 minus 2 into alpha beta which is minus 7 so this will be minus 14 plus 1 min, sorry plus 14 plus 1 which will give me an answer of 15 so the value of alpha square plus beta square is 15 I've used the formula for polynomial expansion to find out the value of alpha square plus beta square let's move on to the topic of cubic equations an equation of degree 3 will be termed as a cubic equation the degree has to be 3 that means the highest power of a variable has to be 3 a that means I can have the other powers as well I can have x square x1 and I can have a constant term as well and their coefficients as well so if I write this thing and add it up this is what a general equation of a cubic expression looks like so the general equation for a cubic equation looks like this and if you look at it 
the degree of this equation is 3. So that means it will have 3 roots. 3 roots means let me call them as alpha, beta and gamma. I hope you remember the values of input where the value of a fx turns out to be 0. Now, if you sketch the cubic equation graphically, I know a linear equation gives me a straight line. A parabola is formed for a quadratic equation. And graphically, a cubic equation looks like an S-shaped graph upside down. This is what a cubic graph looks like. The point where it cuts the x-axis would be termed as the roots of this cubic equation. So there will be roots alpha, beta and gamma. For the equation in question, the value of alpha is minus 3, beta is 0 and gamma is plus 3. So these are the three roots that we have for this quadratic equation. Now from a general quadratic equation, I can find out the roots or I should say I can find out the sum or the product of roots using these set of formulas. So alpha plus beta plus gamma, this is the sum of roots taken one at a time. So if I take one root alpha, another root beta and third root gamma and add them up, the sum of three roots is given by minus b by a. b is the coefficient of the term containing x square and a is the coefficient of the term containing x cube. Now the next thing is sum of product of two roots taken at a time. Now if you take two roots, two roots at a time, the roots would be alpha beta, beta gamma and gamma delta. I'll add them. This is sum of product. So this is given by C by A. C is the coefficient of the term containing x and A, A is what? A is the term containing the coefficient x, sorry, a is the coefficient of the term containing x cube. This is the product of three roots taken at a time. So if you take the three roots, it's alpha, beta, gamma is given by minus d by a. So this will be the sum of one root taken at a time, sum of product of two roots taken at a time, sum of product of three roots taken at a time. When we have a cubic equation, we always write it as plus, minus, plus, minus. We write it like this and this plus and minus sign are adjusted automatically. So if this is alpha, beta and gamma, I am writing it plus b by minus a. So that's why the answer is minus b by a. So if I am writing minus c by minus a, it will be plus c by a and plus d by minus a, it will be written as minus d by a. This is how a cubic equation looks like and I can find out the various relationship between the roots looking at this formulas set of formulas and this is how graphically you can draw a cubic equation it will be cutting the x-axis at three distinct points or maybe out of these three one one or two are same uh, at uh, maximum points would be three so let's look at a question. The question is if alpha, beta, gamma are the roots of this equation. Find the equation whose roots are 1 over alpha, 1 over beta and 1 over gamma. Now if I look at this, I know sum of roots taken one at a time is given by, I'll just write plus, minus, plus, minus, minus 4 by minus 1 which will be plus 4. Sum of product of two roots taken at a time would be given by minus 1 by minus 1 which will be plus 1 and sum of product of 3 roots taken at a time it will be plus 6 by minus 1 which will be minus 6. Now what I want I want the equation whose roots are this what will be the sum of the roots 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta plus 1 over gamma. I take alpha beta gamma as the LCM what I will have beta gamma gamma alpha and uh, gamma beta sorry alpha beta so if i look at it this value i've already calculated is to be one this is minus six so my answer is minus one by six for sum of all the roots now if i look at sum of product of two roots taken at a time i can take my lcm as alpha beta gamma and i'll have gamma plus alpha plus beta I know this value is 1, sorry, this value is 4, 
this will be minus 6 so my answer is minus 4 by 6 sum of product of three roots taken at a time if I take three roots I only one get one scenario which is 1 over alpha beta gamma which is 1 by 6 so equation is x square x cube again I'll have I'll have four terms it will be something like plus minus plus and minus so this is minus x cube plus it will be minus 4 by 6 x square minus minus 1 by 6 x sorry I have written it wrongly this will be minus 1 by 4 x 1 by 6 x this will be minus 4 by 6 x and the last one would be plus a constant term which will be minus 1 by 6 x equals to 0 so if I just take an LCM and adjust the negative sign I will have 6 x cube minus x square minus 4 x plus 1 equals to 0 this is the equation which has the roots 1 over alpha, 1 over beta and 1 over gamma. Let's look at a higher degree equation. k0 x raised to power n plus k1 x, x raised to power n minus 1. The powers of x are increasing. The highest power of x that you have is n. So that means the degree of this equation that we have is n. These k0, k1, so on are the coefficients of the terms with various powers. Now, the graph of this equation may look like this. The points where it is cutting the x-axis will be known as the roots of this equation. So, alpha, beta, gamma, omega, all of these are the roots of this equation it can continue till any roots so all of these are the roots of this equation now I know sum of roots taken one at a time would be given by minus the coefficient of the term which is x raised to power n minus 1 over the coefficient of the term which contain the highest power of x similarly the sum of product of two roots taken at a time would be the next coefficient which is the coefficient of the term containing x raised to power n minus 2 divided by the coefficient of the term containing x raised to power n. Sum of product of three roots taken at a time would be the subsequent coefficient which will be minus the coefficient of x raised to power n minus 3 over the coefficient of x raised to power n. And the last thing would be sum of product of all roots taken at a time would be the last term divided by the coefficient of the first term which will be kn over k0. Now there can be two different polynomials and the concept that we are going to study is the common root of two different polynomials. If I sketch up the graph of fx and gx. So these are the two different polynomials that are given to me. If you look at this, this is a polynomial with degree 5. This is a polynomial with degree 4. So this, this will have basically 5 roots and the roots that I have are 1, 2, 5, 6 and 9. So 1, 2, 5, 6 and 9 are the roots that I have for a function which is fx. fx has been written as x minus alpha x minus beta it has been factorized and written like that x minus ga delta gamma and so on. gx if I draw it graphically it will be intersecting the x-axis at four different points and the points are 1, 4, 7 and 10 that means it has four roots for this equation. Now if I have to find out a common root, common root means fx is 0 and gx is also 0. So this is the way that I will find out the common root. If I just put fx is equal to gx, 
i may get a common root and i may get this point as my answer now if i look at this point is this a root no but here fx is equal to gx now fx is equal to gx will give me their points of intersection out of those points of intersection i will have to check that if both of them are equal to 0 so the point of intersection would be given as fx is equal to gx or fx minus gx is equal to 0 that will give me 1 this two and three points now out of these three points of intersection this point which is one is a common root so common root is fx is equal to gx and both of them has to be equal to 0 simultaneously that value of x would be known as common root for the equation so let's look at a question that we have the number of roots common between the two equation this and this is so what i'll do this is fx it's a cubic equation this is gx if i put fx is equal to gx i get their point of intersection so if i just do that x cube plus 3x square plus 4x plus 5 equals to x cube plus 2x square plus 7x plus 3 So x cube is getting cancelled out. If I just look at this, will be x square minus three x plus two equals to zero. So it is turning out to be a quadratic equation that you have. Now, if you look at it, the sum of roots is coming out to be three, and the product of roots is coming out to be two. So that means the roots would be one and two. So if I just check the value of f at one. So if I just put it out, it is not coming out to be equal to zero. If I look at the value of g one, it is again not coming out to be equal to zero. F of two not coming out to be zero. Again, g of two not coming out to be zero. These are all the positive values that we are getting. So I know f one is equal to g one, but it is not equal to zero. I know f two is equal to g two. But it is not equal to zero. So these are the points of intersection at x is equal to one and two, but they have no common root because this is not equal to zero. So my answer to this would be a part, which is there is no common root that you have between the two equations. Thank you so much for watching this video. In case you want to practice more questions on quadratic, cubic, and higher degree polynomials, please refer to our website edusathi. dot com and uh, move on to the next presentation, which will be on inequalities. All the best.